Hey, this is Dean Soto. I'm an entrepreneur, husband, and father of seven, also an author. Hit the subscribe button right now for more videos dealing with business, your health, your spirituality, as well as your family, which is the most important, right? Well, one of the most important things. So today, we're going to be talking about, boom, business partners not pulling their weight. And this is a great topic. It's one that I actually went in detail in my one of my books. Let's see if I can uh, pull it up. Oh, it's all backwards, all upside down. Um, let's see. How do we rotate this? How do we rotate this, guys? Transform and flip 90 degrees. Boom. Leverage. One of my books, uh, Leverage. I'm going to be updating this just so you know. Uh, this does say six or more children not required. This is the art of build, a biz- uh, build that amazing business by working less. And uh, so, yeah, I'm going to be doing a, a whole revamp of this book. It's probably going to stay and keep the same name, but in it, I talk heavily about partnering. And it's one of the best way to leverage. It's the best way to to use to, to, for all the stuff that you're not great at to have someone else help you with that and in the process save a lot of money, potentially save a lot of money. So if you want to go check that out, you can check it out. It's Leverage. Search Leverage Dean Soto on Amazon or you can wait for the updated one that should be coming out within the next few months. Um, for me, I would probably wait because I'm going to have some really good stuff in there. So we'll see. But anyway, all that being said, Partnering. Partnering is one of the best ways for sure, one of the best ways for uh, for sure of getting things done without having to spend a lot of money up front. Why? Because when t- typically when you're partnering with someone, unless they unless you are well, I mean really they're either going to buy themselves into your business or they're going to be doing something right up front without expecting a wage, without expecting any money, right? But one of the problems that you can fall into, we all, anyone who's partnered knows this, one of the part, uh, one of the problems you can fall into is the other partner not pulling their weight, right? And there's several reasons for this, and we're going to talk about how you can, how you can not let this happen, how you can prevent it. And then at the very end, I'll give you some suggestions on how to, if this is happening, how to resolve it, okay? So let's get into it. So tip number, ah, I'm all over the place. Boom. And is that right? No, that's not right. Turn that off. Turn that off. There we go. (laughs) <laughs> Tip number one. All right. Still trying to figure this out. Tip number one, you've got to be as clear as possible in any partnership. So back when I back when I was helping this one Amazon company, uh, I partnered with a guy. Let's call him Bob. And he was he was so he needed me to help him to teach people how to sell on Amazon. Uh, I knew how to do webinars. I knew how to do membership sites. I knew how to, how to do all of the back end. I've always been really good at that side of things. So when he, so he came to me, he's like, Hey, we know each other really, really well. Why don't we partner up on this and you can do the back end. You can do the, the website. You can do all of the things that are needed in order to support. And what I can bring to the table is I can bring an audience, which he did have an audience, and I can bring myself who knows how to sell on Amazon. This is back when people had no idea how to sell on Amazon. Like now Amazon FBA is huge, right? It's it, a lot of people uh, sell on Amazon. There's tons of courses out there and so on. And he wanted to take the knowledge that he had gained and give it to uh, other people, but he didn't have anyone that he knew or trusted. And he didn't want to go and pay someone, you know, $20,000 to figure out or to just to find out that they really sucked at what they were doing. Right. So we developed this 50, 50 partnership, which typically when you're going into any type of partnership, that's tends to be the default, right? 50, 50, 
which is something that you also need to be very clear about. So anyway, we get into this partnership and right away, not right away, I would say within, within about a year. So it went really well in the very beginning. So I got the site up. I got the course up. I started getting the, the email marketing done. He was creating, uh, I was getting him to create videos and he was creating them. I was doing my thing. I was, I was uh, building out support systems and, and things like that. I was um, doing a whole bunch of stuff. He was doing a whole bunch of stuff too. And so the first year was awesome. The first year we made a lot of money. It was great. I could even run ads. I was running uh, Facebook advertising to some of these courses. We were making money. It was great. Several thousand do- uh, thousands of dollars, and we were just selling an info product, an information product, which is one of the harder things to sell. Well, fast forward to about a year after that, things started getting to where it was rather uneven. He would have these grandiose ideas. I would implement those grandiose ideas and do all the back end. And then he'd go, ah, you know what? I have this other idea. And I go, okay. And then I implement that. Ah, I have this other idea. And I go and implement that. And what would happen is all these other things would drop off. They would drop off. And I work my butt off on these things. I work my butt off on these things. And he would fly off to this side, into that side, into this side, into that side, to the point where it just got so frustrating, right? There was, and and on top of that, there was no clarity on what the split was going to be. It was just going to be 50-50, right? So I was paying for Infusionsoft. I was paying for server space. I was paying for all of these different things to my detriment. And he would take 50, 50% and I would feel bad that, uh, that if I charged him for server space or whatever, right? So there was no clarity in who was paying for what right? And so over time, it just got to the point where it was like, dude, we're done. Like we can't do this anymore. And which led to even more problems, further things. Who owns the intellectual property? Who owns the, uh, the courses and all that other stuff, right? So it become, it became a very, uh, odd and very ten, uh, tense situation, but it all stemmed from all stemmed from this right here a handshake it was just a handshake it was a bro deal right it was a bro deal hey 50 50 we're going to help each other out we're going to do all that stuff right well that's a big problem if you're in a business you cannot have bro deals everything needs to be in writing it can be a simple agreement it could be a one page agreement but you need to outline responsibilities. You need to outline what happens if those responsibilities are not met. You need to outline what the split's going to be, what the expenses are, things like that. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a, a very specific agreement, like in the sense of, or a big, big long agreement, I should say, a big long agreement. It can be very specific and very short, but it has to outline. So in my agreements, I'll have things such as, this is, these are your responsibilities, these are my responsibilities, and so on and so forth. And it goes down the line. Here, who pays for expenses? Who uh, pay, and, and you have to have it in writing. You have to. Because no matter how good of friends you are, generally it's going, unless they are extremely, extremely good friends, it is going to end up being a very bad situation. Okay, so tip number one, you have to be as clear as possible and you have to have it in writing. Okay, what do you want? You have to know what you want. What do you want to get out of this? What are, what are they getting? Because uh, I'll, give, uh, I'll give you another example of another partnership that I had that, that didn't go south. It just ended up not being great, but we'll talk about that in the next one. But what do you truly want? You need to be very clear about what's going to be valuable for you, what's going to be value for, valuable for them, and what's going to be valuable to your client base or your customers, okay? So that's tip number one. Tip number two, do you really need them? Do you truly, really need them? And I'm not saying that you don't need somebody that is going to... You don't need somebody who is going to um, uh, 
you might have skills that you're not able to actually produce and do well that this person can. But a lot of the times we think we think very short term, right? Do you truly want to take somebody on that's going to take a certain percentage, a certain percentage of your business, a certain percentage of your business for the long haul for a specific thing that you need? So say they are really good at marketing or email marketing or they're really good at social media, they're really good at what, whatever you're lacking. Does, this, does that really truly warrant that they're going to take essentially a piece of your business? Okay, so I had a partner, let's call him, um, let's call him, uh, well, we said Sam last time, let's call him John. So John came at a, still a great friend of mine, amazing friend, really good at what he does. And he, he came at a really, really, really good time. Okay, he came at a time where where I needed him to help me with marketing campaigns. In fact, you can talk, uh, in, I, I, I believe I talk about this in one of the previous videos, but anyway, I had, I was in a bind. I needed someone who was really good at marketing and, uh, specifically email marketing. We ended up working together. I said, you know, Hey, I'm going to give you X percentage of this, of all the sales that come from this in perpetuity. If you help me out with this, he said, yes. And then we ended up doing like literally in like five or six days in like a week, we ended up doing $115,000 in sales. And, and these are, this is a product that has a very, very high margin. Okay. So we got to keep most of that. The, the, so on top of that, I was already partnered with, what did we call him? Bob, who was also part of this. So I was paying Bob and I was paying this person. So splits were going all over the place, right? Well, as time went on, so we started doing the, the, we started utilizing him for email marketing, different types of strategies, things like that. And time went on, we were doing that with different aspects of this software, but it got old. It got to the point where, and, and no, through no fault of his own, this is what basically the kind of the agreement was because we did sign an agreement. I wasn't super clear, uh, but but what was happening was he was, he didn't really need to even do anything. And he was making a crap ton of money or making a good amount of money. And because he wasn't doing anything, I was like, what the heck's going on? Like what, like I'm doing all the work, I'm doing all this and he's sitting back just collecting checks. And so is Bob over here who I also partnered with collect, collecting checks on this and he's not doing anything either, right? Well, did I really need that person? This is particular in this particular case, I would say yes, but I would have said just for this specific thing. Okay. But are there a lot of good people that are great at email marketing and strategy and so on? Yes. Could I have hired someone for $5,000 say, do the same thing that this guy did? And say, you know, pay him up front and then say, okay, cool, thanks, see ya. Yeah, I could have. I probably could have and it probably would have done just as well. I'm not sure. I don't know. That's the risk that you take, right? I don't know. But that I could have paid that person $5,000 and then for every subsequent campaign, another $5,000. And I would have been able to pocket twenty or 10, 20, whatever I paid them, 10, 20, 30, a hundred thousand dollars or whatever, right? I could have done that and not given away that stuff. But do you really need this person? That's the thing. Are you, or are you willing to pay up front somebody who will do it as a work for hire, somebody who will do it and not be a part of your business moving forward? That's the thing you got to really ask yourself before getting in any partnership. Can I, if, if I take this person on and have to pay them, is there an all, another alternative? Is there somebody who can do the same thing for, I'm going to have to pay them up front or pay half up front or whatever. Is there somebody that else that can do this, right? Now, I liked the, the partnership that we had. It was great. We built friend, a huge friendship with it. And, and, 
and we'll probably end up partnering in some fashion or another again, but it ended up getting to the point. So with John, it ended up getting to the point where it was just really off balance. Plus, plus his skill set wasn't being utilized as well as it could be anyway. So any, all the strategy that we were doing, all the emails that were going out was not re- really resulting in anything, not, not anything of value. So it ended up being where we parted ways and I'll, I'll share how that happened later on. All right. So in tip number three, I always set my agreements to revisit every 90 days. There is a reason for that because if you have these long-term agreements where it's, where there's literally no time frame whatsoever, or, uh, or you have a, a an agreement where it's one year, two years, five years, and so on. A lot can happen in five years. A lot can happen in 90 days as well, okay? <laughs> so in your agreement, you have to have, I recommend having something where you revisit the agreement every 90 days, and at that point, either person can cancel out the agreement. It doesn't have to be where they both agree to it. Either person can cancel out the agreement. Okay. Which means that if you own, because in in my situation, in my situation, I owned all of the intellectual property. I owned all of the property. I owned all of the infrastructure, everything, which meant what? It meant that the uh, person that I was partnering with had to bring value to the table. So every 90 days, every 90 days, they're thinking like, how am I bringing value? How am I bringing value? How am I bringing value? Right? How am I bringing value is a huge, huge question that you constantly want your partner to ask. Okay. Now I know that this is, cause this is mainly dealing with online stuff. This is mainly dealing with small business partnerships and there are huge partnerships and so on and so forth. But, um, even with those you still want to have something that's stipulated where you can cancel the agreement. You can cancel the agreement, okay? And Because there's going to be times where you're doing a lot of work and they're not. But there's also going to be times where you're doing none of the work and they are doing a lot of the work. I've had that in situations before. But so you're constantly swinging and, and bringing value. You're constantly bringing value in some way, whether it's you or somebody else you or the other person, right? So you want to, you want to have something like that. Okay. And then, you know, uh, I didn't really have the, uh, like a written thing up here, but anyway, what happens when you have somebody, let's just put this title back. What happens when you have somebody who, that was from last one, but who is your, your partnered with you really don't have uh, anything where where you can get out of it. What do you do? Okay. So what I did in the case of John was I ran the numbers. You have to look at numbers. Okay. Ran the numbers. And it, it depends on what the partnership is like. You might have to buy out the person. You might have to say, dude, a... Um, uh, that, well, so here's the thing. What, this is what I do. This is what I did. Okay. I didn't have to buy out and buy him out at all. Um, because the numbers didn't even, didn't even show, show like that there was anything to buy out. So I ran the numbers essentially with, it went from us doing several hundred thousand dollars per year down to, you know, maybe 30 or $40,000 for the year. And given the partnerships that were involved, we were each making less than a McDonald's worker in this particular, in this particular area, right? So I, but, but none of, nobody ran the numbers. Nobody looked at the numbers. I saw them all the time, but nobody looked and showed the numbers of, and showed what was actually happening. And so because of that, <laughs> I, I went, I, I, I remember I was at Lake Tahoe uh, with my, with my, family and it was early morning and I ran the numbers and I, and I showed, I showed them, Hey, here is what's happening. We are not making any money really. 
and this partnership's not working out at all. And we have the choice where we can keep on trying to make this thing happen or we can break the agreement or we can cancel out the agreement because no matter how hard we're trying to push, it, nothing's really happening. And so after showing the numbers, I said, I, I said, it, it's up to you. It's up to you. I'm not going to, I'm not planning on doing anything more with this particular list anyway. It's up to you. Do you want to keep going with the agreement? What was happening with me was I had, I had, I, I, I basically couldn't do certain things. I couldn't even do certain things with the online empire Academy, uh, YouTube video and uh, YouTube channel. I couldn't do certain things without feeling like they're going to get a cut out of it. And so nothing's going to happen. Right. And so after showing the numbers, I said, Hey, look, it's not working. And they agreed and they said, yeah, you know what? It, it's not working. Uh, why don't I said it would be more lucrative for us if we went our separate ways and focused on something that we're all good at. And then if time, if time comes where we can partner up again on something, boom, we'll partner up again on something. Right. And so, so all that being said, we ended up canceling out the agreement because we had the 90 days in there. If, and even if you don't have the 90 days in there, a lot of times you can still get people to cancel. I mean, if the numbers don't make sense, if you, you have to be as real as possible, the numbers aren't making sense. Like, you know, what, you know, we're this essentially, I was saying this is crashing and burning no matter what, what do you get? What do you guys think? And they said, yeah, let's just cancel it and we'll move on. We'll do our own thing. In in some cases, it might be where you say, look, the numbers don't make sense. We're crashing and burning. How much to buy you out? And let them figure out the number. And then you can come back and say, well, you know, whatever. But really, that's that's your only option if you don't have something that's that's behind it. There Often, I've never had it to where... I've never had it to where the business partner is able to make a big change and come back because they've already been stuck in habits. They've already, they're, the reason they're not pulling their weight is because they're outside of their, their zone. Really, you've either overtaken them or situation has made it to where they're not really valuable anymore. So a lot of the times, I mean, 90% of the time, you're going to have to, you're going to have to break it off with them. Uh, very rarely, I've, I've never been in a situation where the partner has shaped up or whatever and changed and moved into an area moved moved into a new area where they're thriving a lot of times you're just gonna have to cancel you're just gonna have to be honest and serious the best way is through numbers show the numbers show hey this is this is it could be the number of hours worked it can be the number of of revenue coming in it could be the number uh, the profit hey you're sucking up x amount of profit this is going to go down like the ship is going to go down because you're sucking out this much profit. Okay. And we're, you're not doing anything or I wouldn't say not doing anything. I would just say, you can say, Hey, given these are the things that I have you doing, are you doing anything else that I'm not seeing? Whatever the data, 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 data is what you need in order to be able to make a change that could potentially save your business. Okay. But if you're already feeling the strain that the partner is not pulling the right weight, um, you got to show the numbers you ha and, and a lot of the times, like I said, you're probably going to have to break it off with that person. I don't, I hate to be a Debbie downer, but a lot of the times that's the way it is. So, um, and just be honest, be truthful, be, I mean, numbers don't lie. Data doesn't lie. Right. So you're, this is not meant to take away from the fact that having partnerships, I got jaded at, at, after a while I got jaded. I'm like, I don't want to partner up with anyone, but as soon as I partnered up with another friend of mine who is great at sales, we ended up increasing our sales on our, uh, on our virtual systems architect agency by like a thousand percent in a few months. So it works and it helps and it, and it does, you really can use a partnership to build your business, but you just have to be very clear, very honest, very, very, um, uh, very, assertive as to what you want in the beginning. Otherwise, if the other partner is starting to not pull their weight, you have to be clear. You have to be assertive and use data to tell them, Hey, this got, this has to change or we got to terminate this, this partnership. Okay. So I hope that helps. 
check out the rest of the YouTube videos. I've been doing a lot of these. I'm trying to get each one of these out on a, every, on a daily basis. And if you have any questions, comments, Hey, if you have a partner right now that you're just like, this person's not pulling their weight and give, want to give a situation, put it into the comments right now. I would love to hear what you have going on. And, uh, if you have any questions, comments or anything like that, please put them down in the comments and don't forget to subscribe and like the video as well. So this is Dean Soto and I'll catch you in the next video.